live stream that I had set up earlier, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So we'll go with this one. So I thought we'd start off with something fairly simple. And uh, I think maybe we'll just uh, do one of these black ghosts. Do a, a bit of a marabou version. So I've got a, a Mustad 3665, uh, size 4. And I'm going to be using some black thread. I'm going to be using 70D UTC. We'll just start that on at the eye of the hook. Just gonna add another light in here just to uh, light this up a little bit better here. That's okay. All right, so for this, we're gonna use some uh, yellow hackle or some schlappen in the back. And I've got some yellow neck hackle. That'll work pretty well. Need a slightly bigger desk here to keep everything on. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to take a few of these uh, yellow hackles. Just kind of squish those all together. Kind of tie in a short tail here. a little bit sparse I'm gonna double that up just to get a little bit more in there if you guys have any questions as I'm tying please feel free to ask in the chat I'll be Keeping my eyes on the live chat as much as I can. All right, so for uh, ribbing on this, I think I'll use some silver uni French. I'm going to use a medium. It's not uh, too big, not too small. Should be a nice fit for this. I guess we should be saying Happy New Year's to everybody. Thanks for joining me today. What's it like in your neck of the woods? We've got a uh, bit of an overcast day here in Ontario. It's uh, We're out earlier for a bit of a walk. And uh, it's not too bad outside. It's hovering around uh, zero Celsius. A little bit of wind. Had no snow. I was thinking about going for a walk in the woods this morning, but just a little bit too much wind to go out for too, too long without really bundling up. All right, so we've got our ribbing tied in. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do the body for this. You can do a... Uh, a black floss body is kind of like your standard. Um, I've done them with 
dubbed bodies, but I think today we're going to do a yarn body. That's one of my preferred ways. Hey Keith, how's it going in Apex, North Carolina? 70 sounds nice. Just got to grab some black yarn. If I have any. Doesn't look like I have any black uni yarn. That might be okay. Just use it. Um, so, no black uni yarn. So I think we're just going to do the backup and we'll go with some black dubbing. Thanks, Keith. Happy New Year to you as well. Happy New Year, Michael. All right, so I just got a little bit of this uh, laser dub. This is the homemade version of the stuff. And we'll just go ahead and we'll dub that on. Just don't want to get it too, too thick here. Want to kind of get it to the same diameter as... I would have my yarn, I guess. And we'll just put a bit of a tapered body on there. We'll go back and fix that up near the tail. So, uh, anybody make any resolutions for the new year? I haven't officially made any, but mine are usually the same as always. Get out, do more fishing, tie more flies, and uh, lose 20 pounds. So we'll see if we can at least get two out of three for 2019. I actually did better in 2018 sticking to those resolutions I was able to get out fishing a little bit more than the year prior and uh, probably tied about the same amount of flies I'm guessing but probably fewer of those actually made it into my own box and more of those into other people's fly box all right so we're just gonna Throw the ribbing on here. One nice thing about a dub body on a fly is uh, I like to see them get picked out a little bit over time as you fish them. Oh. Let that one go a little bit prematurely before we had it bound down at all. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll give that a snip. All right, so we're going to want to tie a throat onto this fly. So let's just tip this up and bring back that yeah, yellow hackle. And uh, we'll just measure that out. Kind of eyeball that. You want kind of about the same as the tail. Maybe a touch shorter. And again, I'm going to thicken that up just a little bit. Just when you're working with neck hackle, it can be a little light. One of the materials I kind of like working with for 
necks a little better is a schlap and gives you a, a, a bit of a fuller throat or collar or whatever you're working with. All right, I'll clean that head up a little bit. All right, so for this, we can go with a number of different materials for the wing. Um, can do like a bucktail wing on this. It's pretty nice. Or fox tail I like. Or why don't we go with a marabou tail on this one. So let's find a nice feather here. It's got some length to the fibers. And what I like to do is I'm going to tie this in in a few sections. Take about an inch or so off of one side. I'll just tie that in about the same length as the tail. Hi Aaron, how's it going? I wasn't planning on doing any articulated streamers, I don't think, today. Uh, we'll see how we do with time here. If we got a little bit extra time near the end, I can tie something up. So I'm going to add a little bit more. marabou just to kind of bulk that up a little bit. Of course, when you get this wet, this marabou is going to collapse into a fairly small, uh, dense little streak of white on top here. So the second one, I like to go just a little bit longer. So you kind of got a bit of a tapering effect going up here. If we don't get uh, any articulated stuff done today, I'm going to put it on my list of flies to do. And uh, we'll definitely do another live stream down the road with some articulated stuff. I was looking at some of the uh, bugger stuff that I've done in the past with a little bit of articulation and... I was thinking maybe we'd do that today, but I was uh, looking to just keep it fairly simple for the most part. You know, we've got lots of new fly tires coming online this time of year. All right, so let's just clean that head up a little bit. I like to just start up by the head, get all that covered up and then work my way back, especially when you're working with materials with white poking through. You want to try and keep that head shape as much as you can. And we can go ahead and just finish that like how it is. That's a good fishing streamer. I wouldn't hang this one on the wall but I'll definitely throw it. And one other thing you could do is just add a little bit of flash in on the side. That would be kind of nice. Uh, we can also look at adding a little bit of uh, realism in here. We can add some mirage eyes to the fly. If they come out of the package, that is. Go 
great. about half of those eyes stuck to the inside of the packaging. That's not good. Let's go ahead and coat that with a little bit of uh, solar res here. Now a lot of times I'll just end up painting on these eyes uh, it's a little bit less headache than these uh, stick on eyes can be but just don't get the reflectiveness on those I'm just going to put another coat on there just to kind of make sure it's sealed all the way Happy New Year, Brian. Hope all's well out there. Josh, hello from across the lake. Happy New Year. Colin, Happy New Year. Thanks. Brian, the uh, wing here, that's just a little bit of marabou. So tied that in in two stages. And then just a little bit of dubbing for the body, like a Senu laser dub and some hackle. Pretty simple little um, marabou streamer. Pretty classic. All right, so that's one down. I'm just going to try another fly here that I haven't really tied a whole lot, but I've got... A book of fly patterns that are it's a fairly rare book and it's uh, done by uh, Ken Thayer and Quincy Thomas so this one's called uh, long feathers long flies and it's uh, I think it's uh, only 200 copies of this that were ever made and this one's from around uh, 1997 so it's one of those really hard to find books but it's got uh, some really neat fly patterns in it I'll give you a little shot of what's inside so Nothing super fancy, just uh, kind of put together from the print shop kind of thing. But uh, some nice, unique fly patterns in there. So we're going to take one of those and we're going to tie uh, one of these patterns. Uh, Keith. The hook on here is a Mustad 3665A. It's one of the older ones. Okay, so this one we're going to tie is called a Russian Squirrel. And again, this is a fairly simple pattern. Just need to get a little bit of squirrel. So it calls for brown Russian Squirrel. I, I've got fox squirrel that we're going to use, and hopefully that fits the bill. I'm going to have to find something else to put these mirage eyes in, because I took these out of the package. I don't know if you can see all those little dots in there. Those are all the ones that stuck behind, rather than coming off on the uh, mylar there. We'll figure that out later. Okay. 
So I think we're gonna stick with the Mustad hook. Uh, so Brian, uh, so the two stages for the wing, I guess there's a couple of reasons. So one of the reasons, I do this with bucktail quite a bit. It's just, uh, especially with bucktail, if you tie in a large amount all at once, it uh, doesn't secure it as well without getting a little bit of flaring. Um, much less so with the marabou, but I just kind of stagger this a little bit. So I've got the first tie goes to here and then the second one goes a little bit longer so that'll just help kind of stabilize the fly as it flows through the water all right so again we're tying with the mustad 3665a and uh it, it's a bit of an older hook but i I really like this Limerick bend on there and the nice long um, uh, hook point on here is nice as well. Okay, so this one calls for some black thread. We'll go ahead and just start that on right behind the eye. Um, so for the body, we're going to be using some silver mylar. So I've got some uni mylar. This is the gold silver in number 10. And I think that's the widest they've got. Steve, happy new year. Hope everything's going well down there in New York. Aaron. Yeah, I'm sure they would probably just call it squirrel in Russia. I'm not sure where the Russian part of it comes from. Might be kind of a local term. Um, I know we've got some really big squirrels around here. The fox squirrels and the eastern gray squirrels as well. Francis, uh, yeah, I agree. The uh, little bit of flash in there would be really nice. One thing I do is uh, just a little bit of flashaboo, I think, for that black ghost. But another thing I've done before is just take a little bit of uh, the pearl ice dubbing and just tie that either between the two layers or um, just a little bit on top, just kind of like... Uh, an angel hair, not too thick, and just a little bit of enhancement. All right, so I tied that in with the gold side of the mylar facing up. And we'll take that back to the eye. We're just gonna kind of leave ourselves a little bit of room here. I'm gonna add a half hitch so we don't bump that out let's try uh, using this rotary feature on the vise all right so what i do when i'm using my rotary i just like to pull that mylar a little tight you don't want to pull it too tight and you just have to be careful that you're not going to hit that hook point when you're coming down. So you gotta pull it forward and back. And once you clear that, you're good. You just kind of keep constant pressure on that. Keep it at that angle. And you'll wrap forward, covering the uh, wrap prior every time. And the longer your hook, the more your hook's going to bend. I don't know if you can see it on the video there, the hook bending. I'm 
I guess I'm going to have to look up that Russian squirrel, but I think we'll be just fine using the fox squirrel we've got here. All right. So we've got a nice silver mylar body here. Save the rest of that for another fly somewhere down the road. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of gold crystal flash or some copper. Let's see what I've got in my bag. Flash here. I got some copper, so I think we're going to go with that. I'm uh, not 100% sure that I have any gold in the bag. So, Josh, any advice for someone wanting to start a fly tying YouTube channel? Um, I think the biggest thing is just to start doing it. Uh, you, for me, I guess it's going on about two years that I've had this channel now. And when you first start out, I don't think you, you might not think anyone's going to watch or whatever, but, uh, you'd be surprised. And, uh, people are, especially in the fly tying, fly fishing part of things people are generally fairly civil so I think you just kind of start um, you want to make sure you got a camera that can focus in on your flies fairly well if uh, you have trouble with it maybe start with some bigger flies until you have a camera that can tackle some of the smaller stuff and kind of start with that and just kind of take it from there. Um, one thing that I like to see from fly tires is a little bit of history behind some of the flies that they're tying. Uh, I mean, it's definitely not necessary to do something like that, but it's something I look for. Just a little bit of my personal preference, I guess. A little bit of something I look forward to learning about the different flies from different parts of the world and something that kind of lacks I guess you don't always find that kind of stuff so we just got that copper flash on there so I'm just resetting up this uh, stream here Um, Joshua, what kind of flies do you tie? All right, so now we're going to tie on some squirrel. So let's find, I like the hair near the top. That's kind of the nicest. It's got a little bit of barring up there. So let's take a small clump from near the top. Hi, Hank. How's it going? For some reason, Hank, I thought you were out of Alberta, but I guess you're from Ontario, huh? All right. So we've got a little bit of this uh, fox squirrel here. I just like that nice dark barring in the middle there. Kind of gives it a nice look.
Yeah, Francis, uh, mentioning different alternative materials or different variations on a way to tie a fly. Uh, that's uh, also something nice to have from uh, YouTube fly tire. All right, so we've got this hair on top here. Let's just separate those out a little. Just want to make sure when you're tying in the squirrel, give it most of the pressure about right here. Make sure that it's tied in really well. And then a little bit lighter when you get to this end, just so that you don't uh, get your hair flaring out like this. Same with deer hair as well. So again, we got a nice fishing fly here. Nothing I'm going to hang on a wall, but definitely one I'm going to throw. So I'll just go ahead and clean up that head just a touch. So I should have moved my cut for the head just back a little bit so that that tapered a little bit nicer than it did. Well, that's gonna be a fairly decent fly. Be curious to see how that does. And again, that one's from Long Feathers, Long Flies. If you do see that book in a thrift shop or something anywhere, make sure you pick it up. It's, uh, I think there's only about 200 copies of that one out in the wild. I was lucky enough to get one a couple of years ago when I was doing the Streamers 365 project. I had probably been looking for about four or five years for that book and it finally came up and uh, I was just lucky that it did, to be honest, and managed to get it. And I haven't seen one listed anywhere since. So when you see it, go for it. All right, I think I'm going to tie a... Uh, classic bucktail pattern here now. This one's a black dace. So again, just going to use the Mustad 3665A size 4 hook. And black thread just in behind the eye. And so on this fly, we have a red tail. So I like to use this uh, uni yarn. And I'm just going to use a doubled section of that. So I'm going to take off about four or five inches of yarn. And we'll just tie that in just behind the eye a little bit. Don't want to put too much material right at the eye. And then we're also going to tie in again this Mylar gold silver. And I'll take probably about 10 inches or so of that. just so that I've got a lot of uh, material to work with. We'll tie that in on the gold side. So the gold side's facing out that way. When we go to uh, wind it, the silver side's gonna be up, which is what we want. So Josh, right now I'm tying mostly bass flies. Uh, the river by the apartment is loaded with smallmouth. Originally started out with trout flies. You know, I think it would be good. There's not a lot of representation of bass flies, so I think that would be, if you're going to look for a niche, 
in the fly tying, uh, bass would be really good. But, I mean, even if you look at a lot of the tires who are doing videos on YouTube, uh, even doing the same pattern, you can learn things from different people. Everyone's got a bit of a different style or different take on the same pattern. Like even if you look at the black ghost I just tied, there's probably about 30 or 40 different ways at least to tie just that fly. So, Josh, I think um, you just go for it and uh, make sure you let me know if you do. And uh, if I like your flies, I'll make sure that they get shared out and maybe we'll even feature you on uh, the channel here if you'd like all right so let's just put a half hitch in here and then we'll wind that tinsel forward All right, again, we'll just wind that same way. You just want to keep a tight line on your tinsel as you wrap it forward and slightly overlap the uh, layer before you just so that you got really full coverage and then you'll have a nice smooth body. Yeah, I think what Hank's getting to about uh, material selection, sometimes it's just you're using it because that's what you've always used or that's what the recipe calls for, not necessarily that you've chosen a, a certain material for any specific reason. But um, if I'm designing my own flies, it's usually there's a bit of reasoning in behind it. And if there's nothing really specific, if it's just for the color, you can always make a substitution without too much difficulty. All right, so we've got a nice little red tail on the back, nice silver body. We want to give ourselves a little bit of room to work with and form a head on the fly. So we're going to start off with a little bit of white bucktail. And one thing with bucktails, I don't like to dress them too heavily. Um, see, a lot of the ones you see in the fly bins are probably dressed about with twice as much hair as you really need. So we'll start off with about that much hair. And we're going to whittle that down a little bit. Pull out the shortest stuff, pull out the longest stuff, and we'll kind of pair that back. We'll do that a couple times till we've got uh, somewhat evenly stacked hair. And then I like to roll it. If you get some stuff doesn't roll quite well, pull that out. until you end up with about this. All right. So just kind of measure that a little bit longer than the bend of the hook. Just kind of eyeball that, transfer that. 
And then I like to just kind of follow that up. Cut that off on an angle. And then we'll tie that in in a couple different sections. Just so that uh, your wing's a little bit more durable. It's not going to pull out really easily. And come in here and trim the, that up. Help keep our taper in the fly. All right, for the second layer on this, we're gonna use a little bit of uh, black bucktail. You probably wanna start off with about half as much as you did with the white. Again, we'll pull out the really short stuff. Then we'll just kind of even that up a little bit. Pull out stuff that's not going to cooperate with us. Yeah, when I first started tying flies, I started with mostly flies that you could find in the books. And I st still do tie quite a few of those. Uh, and Hank's mentioning that he does that for learning techniques and learning new skills, which is awesome. Um, I still use some of the flies. But uh, he also mentions that a lot of the flies he fishes with are ones that he's designed himself. So, And I'm kind of in that same boat. Um, I would say that a lot of the flies I fish with are heavily inspired by some of the old patterns that I've tied in the past. So some of them are close enough of a match that I wouldn't call it a different pattern. I would just call it a, a variation. So say there was, say this uh, black or black nose dace, for instance, if I made a couple changes to it, like gave it a gold body and maybe changed the color of the wing a little bit, might just call it a variant rather than giving it a full name. But, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of ways to skin a cat and to tie a fly. But, yeah, I like that approach. All right, so finally we're going to come in here. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, the brown from uh, a white bucktail. I want to get the stuff that's just in here. I think it was uh, Barry Ord. Clark, he had a tutorial on how to uh, split your colors. So basically, you can kind of see this line here. If you cut your bucktail on that line, you'll have all white on this side. And in the middle here, you'll have your brown section, and you'll have another white on this side. So uh, I haven't had the time to go through and try that out, but it's uh, a good tip. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the brown from the middle here. This is one of those colors that uh, if you want to get a bucktail that's dyed this color, it's kind of difficult. Um, so you almost have to go ahead and just take it out of the middle of a white one. So I'll just finish that off. It's a little bit heavy. We'll Thin that down a little bit. I 
So when I learned to fly, tie flies, um, the internet was a thing, but it was a pretty young thing. And uh, there weren't, YouTube wasn't around at that time. So, but there were a few fly tying sites, like Global Fly Fisher was around. Um, I think they've been around probably the longest. Fly Anglers Online was a thing. There were, uh, what was the other site? Uh, Virtual Fly Box was one of the ones that I learned to tie on as well. But definitely, uh, YouTube has changed the game for fly tying in a big way. All right, so let's clean up this head a little bit here. Make it look a little pretty. You can kind of see the layering on that fly. And uh, this is probably one of the first patterns I ever tied. And it's uh, a bit of a trickier fly just because with the three different colors, it's easy to take too much hair into each layer and really overdress this one in a hurry. Same with uh, things like Magog Smelt and other patterns with, uh, or bucktails with three or four different colors in the wing. So you just have to learn to um, just pare it down a little bit. You should be good. So what would I do to improve the black nose dace? Um, well, I think I would change out this silver for maybe something pearlescent. And I might shift this so the white is in the belly underneath and maybe a little bit shorter. And then just have the black and the brown on top and probably also add some eyes to that. Why not? Bo, 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 bo. I don't know why I'm trying to skip forward. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I do the same thing when I'm, I'm reading books now. I try and swipe up. And for some reason, it doesn't work. All right. So that's that for this fly. We'll put a coat of head cement. I'm going to add these flies uh, to the draw flies that I give away. Um, so I was just finished filming the, uh, dr uh, the next swap as well. So if anybody's listening and they're interested in taking part in the fly swap, um, uh, should be up later today. And I'll give you all the details you need to know in there. All right, I think we got time for maybe one more. Um, let me see here. Let's do a kind of a simple feather wing streamer. We haven't done any feather wings. All right, I guess we can stick with the black. And um, let me see what we've got at hand here. All right, let's make something in olive and gold, maybe. It's a nice color combination. So I'm going to tie a tail with a little bit of 
Rooster Schlappen. All right, let's tear a bit off the top here. Just try and taper that into the body as best we can. Just kind of avoid having a big bump at the uh, tail end. If we do it that way, it'll just kind of taper out gradually. And uh, we really don't need to do this, but I'm going to add a ribbing on this fly. Uh, I like the look of, of uh, streamers when they've got contrasting rib, metallic rib on a metallic tinsel body. It kind of looks pretty sharp in my opinion. All right, we're gonna take some more of that gold silver mylar. This time we're gonna tie it silver side up. And we're gonna make gold body on this. All right, so we'll just tie this down. We'll try and keep that underbody fairly smooth. Doesn't have to be perfect. If I was tying this for a presentation streamer, I would definitely be taking my time and making sure every single one of those wraps was touching and taking a little bit more time to make sure that the underbody on this fly was perfectly flat. But of course, these are just fishing flies, so we don't want to be spending half a day creating each one. All right. So we put a half hitch in that, and uh, I think we did. I'm just going to put another one in just in case. All right, now we'll just wrap that forward. Make sure you keep some pressure on your tinsel as you wrap it forward so that it doesn't cause little bumps in here. Trim that out. Now this is just a uh, kind of a freestyle pattern I'm doing here, nothing specific, but once I'm done, I'll kind of have a look at it and uh, make an assessment and make some changes before I try it out. So I'll just reverse wrap that oval tinsel there we go okay so I'd like to put a belly on this and um, let me see Not really too sure what color 
I want to use on that. I was thinking maybe tan. Would go well with that. Let's try it with a tan today. And sometimes this might be called a throat on this or depending on how long. Usually if you're tying it kind of behind the hook point, you would call it a throat. And in this case, we're going to tie it out past the hook point or hook bend. So I'm going to call this a belly. All right, maybe just thin that down just a little bit. Let's kind of keep it about the same length as the tail, touch longer. Trim that off here. When you're doing that, make sure you got something to catch all your, all your waist ends. They're not going on the floor. You'll have uh, some angry spouses if you're doing that. All right. Kind of like that. So now we'll need a little bit of peacock curl. Just for a dark center line in here. I'm only going to use four curls for this. And tie them in about the same length as the tail. You just want to try and make sure that they are centered on top. All right, and I think we're gonna add a couple feather hackles on here. S thinking maybe this Coq de Leon might be a nice choice. And this one is a light pardo. So that's the uh, white ink Coq de Leon. I'm going to take a couple feathers from somewhere in about the middle. Take maybe six feathers for this one. And we're going to separate those out into two piles one for the left side and stack them, and then one for the right. Just want to kind of match the tips up for that. All right, so then we're just going to extend that a little bit past. We'll pinch it here. We're going to come in and Pull up those fibers, pull them away. Do the same on the bottom. We'll trim those. Clean that up a little. And I like to tie those in just little bit to one side. Just kind of do a loose tie there. I'm going to grab 
hackles from the other side, match those up. That looks good. Trim those away. We'll tie those in on the other side of the hook shank, kind of along the side. So when you're looking at it from the side, we've got first three uh, over here, and then the next three over here. You just want to tint them a little bit so that they're kind of facing in towards each other. And then the rest of those colors just kind of melt up in there. All right, that looks pretty good. Now for a fly like this, you can, it's a bit fancier, I guess. You could finish that off with a little bit of uh, jungle cock nail, if you want. Um, not sure if I have any jungle cock right here. And a little bit. So I'll grab a couple nails. And uh, if you don't have this, I mean, you can uh, just leave it plain or you can paint them if you like. So what I do is I usually just grab one. I'll kind of measure it to where I like it. Then I'll strip off the fluff near the bottom. That looks like it'll be a good fit right there. So then I'll grab the other feather, the other nail, and I'll match those up kind of tip to tip. And then I'll just match those. Then we've got them even on both sides. Alright, so let's tie that in on this side first. We'll tie the other side. And I like to just fold up those um, stems just because they can be fairly fragile. And if you just do a straight snip, they can slip out fairly easily. All right. I think that looks okay. Not perfect by any means, but again, this one will fish fairly well. This will be a good fly for uh, fishing lakes or for bass as well. It'll be a nice bass fly. So I think that's it for today, guys. I'm just going to add a coat of cement on here. I'd like to thank everybody who uh, joined the stream. 
Much appreciated. And I hope everybody has a great New Year's. And again, as I said before, I'm going to be posting the details for the next swap. I hope everybody can join. I think I've got a pretty good fly in mind for the one I'm going to be sending out. Aaron, see you later. Thanks for comments. We'll keep in mind to do an articulated streamer thing down the road. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks, uh, Francis, Hank, Joshua, um, Colin, Aaron, Brian, Steve, Keith, and Michael, and anyone else who's been out watching the stream. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. The outdoor angle. Thanks, man. All right. Everybody, thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you on the channel. Thanks again. Keep a hook in your vice.